In front of you, you have four members of the Commission. From your perspective, from your right-hand side, you see Nona Tsotsoria, and on the other hand, you see Victoria Handy, Vitaly Miron, and myself, Hermann von Hebel, the chair of the Commission. You will not see two other members of the Commission as they are recused from participating in the evaluation today. Um, we did receive a request by you yesterday for the recusal of those two candidates. However, uh, the Commission already did take decisions in relation to the recusal of the two of them in relation to Mrs. Ryabchevsky already on the 22nd of July last year and in relation to Tatiana uh, Raducanu on the 21st of February of this year. However, we did not, and the Commission did not uh, communicate that with, with you, and we do apologize for the inconvenience as a result of that. Uh, but having had those decisions, we also consider that the matter has been adequately addressed and that we can continue with our evaluation, if you agree. Well. Okay, very good, thank you. Yes. Um, the Commission is furthermore assisted by a number of members of the Secretariat, uh, and behind you there are some representatives of media and the public. Also present today, as you see, is a photographer who is in the process of taking photographs at the beginning of this hearing for a few minutes. During the hearing, one or more members of the Commission will put questions to you and I would ask you to answer them truthfully and completely. Your explanations are important to the Commission in verifying your financial and ethical integrity. At the end of the hearing, you will be given the opportunity to make a brief closing statement. During the hearing, interpretation between Romanian and English will be provided, and to allow for accurate interpretation, I would kindly ask you to speak clearly and slowly Furthermore, the proceedings are being recorded and the public parts will be available online generally within 24 hours after the hearing via the website of the Commission www.fetting.md. In formulating our questions, we will take into account your privacy and, where required and possible, the privacy of your family members and close persons. So we will, will leave out unnecessary details relating to, for example, ID numbers, bank account numbers, real estate addresses, and the like. For the protection of your own privacy, we of course ask you to do the same. I will start with a brief overview of the procedural background of this evaluation. On the 27th of December last year, the Commission sent you a request for submission of the five-year declaration of assets and personal interests. And on the 3rd of January this year, you submitted your five-year declaration. The Commission also asked candidates to voluntarily complete and submit an ethics questionnaire, and you did so on the 4th of July 2022. The Commission sent you two rounds of questions on the 31st of January and 13th of February of this year, respectively. You were asked a total number of 20 questions, including 57 subparts, and 26 of the questions included the request for further documentation. According to Article 3, Paragraph 4 of the Evaluation Rules of the Commission, a candidate may not provide information, documents or other materials during the hearing if the Commission requested this earlier and the candidate did not provide them within the time specified, unless, of course, the candidate provides sufficient justification, therefore. Members of the Commission will now start with asking you questions and Victoria Henley will start with asking questions first. We will, we will try to keep our questions short and to the point and we ask that your answers be short and to the point as well. Victoria, you have the floor. Good afternoon. Yes, you are. I'm, the first thing I'm going to ask you about has to do with non-disclosure in the declaration that you submitted to the Commission during the evaluation process for the year 2019, um, three, income from three different sources. So according to your FVID tax form for 2019, you received total gross taxable income 
of 547,214 lay in, in 2019, and that included 27, uh, 2,750 lay from Platform for Active Citizenship and Partnership for Human Rights, 90,531 lay as dividends from LLC ASAP Media, 43,169 lay from the Academy of Economic Studies of Moldova, 2,125 lay from AO Independent Press Association, 431,321 lay from Legal Resources Center from Moldova, and uh, 2,735 lay from representation of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation in the Republic of Moldova, and lastly, 1,583 uh, lay from AO National Center for the Environment. In your 2019 declaration submitted to the Commission during the evaluation process, you did not declare income of uh, 2,735 lay and 1,583 lay received a salary from representation of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation and AO National Center for the Environment, respectively, as well as 90,531 uh, lay received as dividends from LLC uh, media. In total, you failed to declare in the uh, declaration to the Commission for 2019, the total amount of 94,849 lay. In response to questions from the Commission, you acknowledged the figures indicated above to be correct. You further stated that you failed to declare in your 2019 declaration um, those three amounts of income. And uh, you explained to the Commission that with respect to the income from the representation of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation and from AO National Center for the Environment Foundation, um, the income that you declared in your CET 2019 tax form, the total sum of 483684 lay, identified you as income received from salary included those two amounts. Therefore, these sums were declared to the tax office and you paid income, or you paid tax on this income. You also informed the commission that the omission to declare these sums to the commission occurred because when you completed your declaration to the commission, you used the information that you received from the organizations that had paid you income in the form of salary and you stated that you noticed that you did not receive such information from the Conrad Adenauer Foundation or from the AO National Center for the Environment. Accordingly, you stated that this information was missing from the calculations prepared by you in your annual declaration submitted to the commission. And regarding the sum of 90,531 lay received as dividends in 2019 from LLC ASAP Media, in response to questions from the Commission, you stated that you were not aware of this sum until you received the Commission's questions. You recognize that this sum uh, indeed appears on your citizens' government portal, and you did not contest the, correction, the correctness of this information. You submitted to the Commission a corrected version of your 2019 declaration in which you included the additional income of 94,849 lay that you had failed to declare in your earlier declaration. I will begin by asking you some questions uh, to establish the facts, and hopefully these can be answered with a yes or no response. Uh, later, I may ask some questions that will seek greater detail. Uh, please confirm that your uh, FVID tax form for 2019 um, declared that you received a total income of 547214 lay in 2019, including 2,735 2, lay and 1,583 lay received from a salary from the representation of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation and from the National Center for the Environment. Okay. Yes, that is true. Um, and the uh, total income also inc included, well, um, and can you confirm, 
follow me. I'll deal with that one separately. Um, and the income received as 90,531 lay as dividends from LLC ASAP Media uh, is income you received from a business that's established by you and of which you were the sole founder, correct? No. Okay. And that's also yes. uh, not taxable income in the same way. Exactly, Mr. Deputy. Indeed, right. you're right. Please confirm that these three sources of income, totaling 94,849 lei, were not listed in your 2019 declaration to the Commission. You are right, I confirm. Uh, and that the reason that you failed to declare the uh, income from uh, the representation of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation and the AO National Center for the Environment was by omission um, because in your CET 2019 tax form, that amount, those amounts were included uh, by you as income received from salary. Is that correct? That confirm. I confirm, yes. And in preparing your declarations for the commission, you've indicated that you relied on information from the organizations that had made salary payments to you and you had not received information from those two organizations, correct? Exactly. Exactly. Um, and the income that you received from in 2019 from the Conrad Adenauer Foundation and the AO National Center for the Environment was fully declared to the tax office and you paid tax on that income, is that correct? Yes, the amount from these two entities. Okay. The amount from these two entities was mentioned in the gross amount. Okay. Um, and please also confirm that the 2019 declaration that you submitted to the Commission also did not include as income received by you in 2019 the sum of 90,531 lei received as dividends in 2019 from LLC ASAP Media. That confirm. Okay. I confirm. And you indicated to the Commission that you were not aware of this sum until you received the Commission's questions, but you did not contest the co correctness of that information. Exactly. Okay. Indeed. And it is correct that you submitted to the Commission a corrected version of your 2019 declaration in which you included the additional income of 94,849 um, lay that you had failed to declare in your earlier declaration? No. Okay. Yes. Uh, according to Article 8 and Article 90 of the Fiscal Code, taxes for income received from dividends are retained at the source of payment, so there were no outstanding or omitted taxes for that payment, correct? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Is there anything you would like to clarify or add with respect to this issue? Uh, no. Exactly no, it's exactly uh, as I uh, told the Commission. I always try to, having various sources of income, I always try to keep record of my income, especially since they come from various sources and various currencies. And usually entities from Moldova always used to send me at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year sort of a receipt confirming the payment uh, towards me uh, during the year. Those two entities did not send me. They're not to be blamed. I just did not keep uh, track of that. It was an omission. When it comes to dividends from the company you mentioned, uh, the, the plan was to liquidate it. And as I said, I was not the administrator. I was not holding the account. So I viewed this information when I received the first round questions. That's when I found this omission. And uh, therefore, in the corrected version of the declaration that I submitted, to the Commission for 2019, I did correct this information. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to ask you about uh, non-disclosure of six bank accounts in your uh, 2021 NIA declaration. So according to information from tax authorities, in 2021, you and your wife had eight bank accounts opened in your names. And we furnished you a list of those accounts with certain information describing each account and the information that we have about the activity uh, in each account. Um, the account marked as bank account number one is a checking account in Romanian currency opened in a Romanian bank account in your wife's name. 
balance of 6,161 uh, Romanian currency in the account when your 2021 declaration was submitted. <coughs> Bank account number two, a checking account in uh, Euro currency opened in your name in 2020. This account was used to receive various forms of remuneration from business and strategies Europe. In 2021, the account had incoming cash flow of 18,600 euros, an outgoing cash flow of 236,481 lei, with a year-end balance of an estimated 143,204,000 lei. According to your 2021 NIA declaration, on the day you submitted this declaration, which was March 31 of 2022, this bank account had a balance of 9,154 euros. Bank account number three, checking account, uh, opened in uh, Moldovian currency, opened in your name in 2010. This bank account was a salary account in which in 2021, there was incoming cash flow of 509,419 lei an outgoing cash flow of 521,340 lei with a year-end balance of an estimated minus 5,501 lei. Bank account number four, checking account in European currency opened in your name in 2013. In 2021, this bank account had transfers from another of your bank accounts in the uh, sum of 54,000 543 lei and had outgoing cash flow of 54,584 lei with a year end balance of an estimated negative uh, 3,745 lei. Bank account number five, checking account in Moldovan currency opened in your name in 2020. This bank account was used to receive uh, child allowance and allocations. In 2021, this bank account had incoming cash flow of 192,923 lei, an outgoing cash flow of 197,213 lei, with a year-end balance of an estimated 3,030 lei. Bank account number six, checking account in uh, U.S. currency, opened in your name in 2020. In 2021, this bank account had transfers from another of your bank accounts in the sum of 8,955 lei and had outgoing cash flow of 9,127 lei with a year-end balance of an estimated 2,265 lei. Bank account number seven, checking account in U.S. currency opened in your name in 2020. This bank account was used to receive a stipend, a scholarship from the Institute of International Education. In 2021, the account received a transfer of 7,467 U.S. dollars. According to the provisions of Article 20, Paragraph E of the tax code, the sum was non-taxable. Bank account number eight, checking account in Moldovan currency opened in your name in 2021. In 2021, this bank account had bank transfers from another of your bank accounts in the sum of 49,368 lei and had outgoing cash flow of 4,200 lei with a year-end balance of an estimated 45,168 lei. Okay. Um, on March 31, 2022, you submitted to NIA your 2021 NIA declaration in which you declared only two of the total of eight bank accounts opened in your and your wife's names, bank account number one and bank account number two that I referred to. According to the law on the declaration of wealth and personal interests in effect, when you filed the declaration, you were required to declare all financial assets held by you and family members, including bank accounts, if the overall amount exceeds the value of 15 average salaries per economy. If this threshold is exceeded, you are required to indicate each account regardless of its individual value. In 2021, 15 monthly average salaries were equivalent to 130,740 lei. The two bank accounts that you declared in your 2021 NIA declaration, bank accounts number one and two, 
had a cumulative balance at the time you filed your declaration of 217,685 lay, exceeding the 15 monthly average salaries threshold. However, you failed to declare the other six bank accounts opened in your name at the time of the submission of your 2021 NIA declaration. Uh, in response to questions from the commission, you agreed that in 2021, uh, you and your and or your wife maintained the eight accounts uh, that the commission asked about, which I listed earlier. Uh, you also stated that initially you understood the law on declaration of wealth and personal interests to require that only bank accounts whose cumulative value you exceeded the 15 average monthly salaries were to be declared. You explained that you calculated the amount of money in the bank accounts, which at the time of submission of the declaration had higher value, but you had not taken into account uh, or declared all of the accounts which had low funds registered in them. And you claimed that the confusion was caused at least by the combination of the following circumstances, the legislation and practice of the National Integrity Commission, the National Integrity Authority, and the courts were non-uniform uh, in the part related to the indication of bank accounts in respect to the amount of money deposited on them. And until now, law number uh, 133 slash 2016 has been amended by five laws. You explained that after reading the questions submitted by the commission, consulting the legal provisions and the instructions provided on the um, uh, NA, NIA website, you realized the omission. In your answers to the commission, uh, you submitted an amended 2019 declaration where you declared all of your wife's and your bank accounts that you maintained as of 2019. This included bank accounts numbers one through eight on our list. You also declared six accounts that we had not asked about. Four of those accounts appear to have been closed before 2021 and were not required to be declared in your 2021 NIA declaration. In your answers to the Commission's questions, you also stated that you would, would be amending your 2021 NIA declaration to rectify the omissions from that declaration. Again, I'll start with some questions. Uh, please confirm that in 2021, you and your wife had eight bank accounts that I described earlier as bank accounts number one through eight. Okay. And can you confirm that the information uh, that I read out earlier and that is on the sheet in front of you, um, if the information about the type of account and the activity in the account is correct? That is correct. It is right, it is. And uh, please confirm that in your 2021 NIA declaration, you disclosed only bank accounts number one and two. Done, confirm. Yes, I confirm. Uh, and it is correct that you disclosed only those accounts which had a combined balance of 217,685 lay because you initially understood the law on declaration of wealth and personal interest to require that only bank accounts whose cumulative value exceeded 15 average monthly salaries to be declared and that you declared the accounts which at the time of submission had higher value but you didn't take into account or declare all the accounts which had low funds registered on them. The confirm. Okay. Yes, I confirm. It's correct that you now understand that the law and declaration of wealth and personal interests in effect when you filed the declaration required you to declare all bank accounts if the overall balance of the accounts um, exceeded the value of 15 average salaries per economy. No. Okay. Yes. And that once the threshold is exceeded, you're required to declare, indicate each account regardless of its individual value. No. Okay. Yes. Uh, and you can play claimed that the confusion was caused by at least a lack of consistency in the legislation and practice of the National Integrity Commission, the National Integrity Authority, and the courts related to the declaration of bank accounts and the fact that up to now law number 133 slash 2016 has been amended five times, correct? I confirm. Okay. Yes, I confirm. Uh, please confirm that with your answers to the commission's questions, you submitted an amended 2019 declaration to the commission where you declared all of your wife's and your bank accounts. That confirmed. Okay. Yes, I confirm. Uh, and if you have that declaration, um, uh, the amended declaration, the accounts that you listed in section 5A of that declaration as accounts one through eight 
are the accounts that the commission asked about as bank accounts number one through eight. Is that exactly. correct? Yes, exactly. You also declared uh, bank accounts that the commission had not asked about, which were listed as numbers nine through fourteen. Is exactly. That correct. Okay. Exactly. Now, listed as number nine is a Romanian bank account of your wife. Exactly. Okay. Yes, exactly. And do you know whether she still held that account in 2021? She still has it. Um, and uh, was the account still open in 2022 when you filed your 2021 declaration? Yes, exactly. That's why I mentioned it. So that account should have been disclosed? Okay. Yes. The accounts listed as numbers 10 and 11 were Romanian bank accounts, which you closed in 2019. Is that correct? Da. Okay. Da. And, yes. Uh, so those accounts were not required to be declared in your 2021 NIA declaration, correct? Da. Yes. And the accounts listed as numbers 12 and 13 uh, are two accounts that uh, I believe were closed as of July 29, 2019. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And they were not required to be disclosed in your 2021 NIA declarations, correct? No. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the account listed as number 14 uh, was closed on December 22nd of 2020? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that was not required to be disclosed in your 2021 NIA declaration, correct? Okay. Uh, please also confirm that you stated to the Commission that you would amend your 2021 NIA declaration to rectify the error. Yes, both to the com I amended the uh, declaration that I submitted both to the, the one to the commission and the declaration exactly as I said in my answer. I amended it on the portal of the National Integrity Authority. Okay. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add, clarify or add about this issue? Uh, no. no, yes indeed, as you were asking the questions, I uh, read the note from the website of the National Integrity Authority. I discussed with some of the integrity inspectors and I suggested them to rephrase some provisions of the regulation because they are not precise. Previously, there, there were many uh, proceedings in court and with uh, the integrity authority when accounts holding just a couple of lay were not declared. So even the, the, of the wording in Romanian, it does not make clarity that all of them have to be declared, as I understand things. And how a member, a uh, candidate to the position of a member of the uh, SEM asked a precise opinion of a national integrity authority and um, received an answer that confirms that you are stating now in a language that we think is more accessible and more precise now, which confirms that even uh, if it's like 0 0.01 lay, but if all accounts have more than 15 uh, average salaries, you have to declare them all. Uh, I have no further questions. Do anyone else? You do have no no questions. Okay, then uh, I would like now to give you the opportunity to make a brief closing statement if you would like to do so. Please go ahead. First of all, I would like to thank you for the very detailed questions that you asked. Even in the documentation that I sent to the Commission, well, in my opinion, I did prove that I did my best every time to use a number of sources to provide the required documentation for the situations I looked into. Certainly, I wasn't able all the time to find all the sources that I needed. For instance, there are certain per diems that are non-taxable, but I was not able to prove that they came from a, from a particular entity or from a particular event. And for me, this was an activity that it's, well, it confirmed to me that it's very good to keep very thorough records of what you do with your money. And it's also about an issue of inconsistency, inconsistent practices regarding the last question, for instance, the um, frequent amendments to the law that puts at risk some of the candidates, like myself, for instance, because I needed to, to be able to understand the law in the way that it was meant. It was also a good audit exercise for me 
And to my documentation, I looked into that and I found some documents that were either on paper only or on a digital format only. So this is like my personal internal audit activity, which I found to be quite interesting and uh, that also and I would like to also help uh, thank you for certain of the questions because it helped me made the right amendments to the declarations to the Commission and I also amended my declaration as a declarant on the website of NIA. Thank you very much. Um, with with this, we come to the end of the hearing already. Uh, I thank you uh, for your submissions and for answering all our questions. Uh, the Commission will now withdraw, of course, for deliberations, and as much as possible, uh, we will strive at delivering a decision within a month after the date of this hearing. I hereby declare the hearing closed, and thank you again.